just a few more seconds. There are still some places left. Okay, we will start now. Hello everyone and welcome to our first webinar at Zindra Sales International. My name is Adrian Gut and I am working as a technical project engineer at Zindra Sales International. My colleague, Mr. Klaus Niederer, who is working today, is responsible for business development of our ventilation. Today we are hosting you from the Zinta Academy in La, where we are located in the Black Forest in Southwest Germany. Before we start, I would like to know where all the participants come from. So please use the chat on the right hand side and type in the country you are coming from. Doing this, you get a little bit familiar with the application and we know where our attendees come from to have a little look, to have an overview. Okay, we have a guest from Romania. I will let you some more time to type in the country you are coming from. In Germany, okay. From Latvia as well, welcome. I will give you some more time. Everybody can send us a message. Hungary. Okay, we will move on now. Um, we would also like to invite you to take part at a webinar. So whenever you have a question, you can use this chat and we will try to answer directly or even later on in the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. I begin by giving you a short overview about what we are going to talk today. I will start with a presentation background. Why are we talking about indoor climate? Why is it important? And how does it affect us? 
Therefore, I will give you some simple facts to understand the necessity of a comfortable and healthy indoor climate. And then we will move on to the main part, where we will talk about the factors which are determining a comfortable and healthy indoor climate and what needs to be done to provide a comfortable indoor climate. We will talk about thermal factors which relate to temperature and humidity. And we will talk about indoor air quality factors itself. So about the CO2 level and other pollutants which are in the air. At the end, I'm giving you a short overview about our system solutions that are aimed to provide a perfect indoor climate. And we have four product lines at Cinder, beginning with um, ventilation systems, which provide uh, good indoor air quality along with energy savings. We have heating and cooling systems to provide thermal comfort. And last but not least, we have clean air solutions to provide a safe and healthy environment for industries. Let me um, show you some simple facts. What do we, we as humans actually need for living? Of course, we need food. We can only last 30 days without food. We need water. Without drinking, we can only survive three days. And if we take a look at the air, or rather oxygen, which has a constant percent in the air, um, we can only survive, uh, survive three minutes. Another simple fact uh, about which a lot of people are not aware or do not think about, um, it's just uh, actually where people spend their time during a day. On average, people spend more than 80% um, of their time indoors, most rooms, and this percentage is even higher in Europe, up to 90%. And thereof, people spend around 58%, which is equal to 14 hours a day in their own living space. And additionally, um, the global pandemic <coughs> COVID-19 has showed us that the working life changed, and in my opinion, it changed after the corona crisis. We have seen that we are working more and more from home, and I think this development we will see after the crisis as well. There are already some huge companies like Siemens, um, which gave their employees the choice to work two days from home even after the crisis. So uh, the time we spend in our own living space will even rise. And on the other hand, we only spend 20% of the day outdoors, which is equal to four hours. So actually here you can already see impressively um, that indoor climate is important because we spend the most of our lifetime indoors. Let me take you to a small excursion into a Singaporean study. This study compares the um, percentage of occupants um, which are experiencing uh, building-related symptoms. These symptoms are called sick building syndromes, and these sick building syndromes are defined as um, uh, acute health and comfort issues that appearance is linked to uh, the time we spend in a building. And there cannot be identified a specific cause or illness. And typically, these symptoms um, relieve shortly after we leave the building again. Yeah. In the study, the building occupants complain about symptoms like dry eyes, blocked nose, dry throat, headache, and so on. 
And if you take a look at the vertical axis, you can see that the percentage is quite high. So there are some symptoms uh, which every third occupant is complaining about. And here we are actually talking about Singapore and Europe where building standards might be high. Talking about these building standards, here's a matter of fact, which we can see uh, in the past years, there has been a rising uh, building standard development. We have, we have uh, a limited availability of energy. So we were forced to build low energy houses like a passive house or even zero energy houses. And this implies also uh, energy efficient technology as well as um, highly insulated houses and a tight building envelope. And having this highly insulated houses coming with a tight building envelope, the houses are not able to breathe anymore because there are infiltration. And so we need to think about um, other ventilation concepts, for example, a mechanical ventilation system. Having these energy demands and uh, comfortable and healthy indoor climate demands, we need to think about energy efficient products and building systems that can provide these demands. And there, then this could be a mechanical ventilation system with heat recovery or even with enthalpy recovery, where we can also recover humidity. In addition, occupants um, seek for more comfort and health nowadays. So you can see there is a demand for these kind of products. And since we are spending more and more time in our own living um, space, uh, these demands will even rise. So these slides showed you why indoor an healthy and comfortable indoor climate is important. And on the following part, I want to present you the factors for comfortable and healthy indoor climate. Adrian, uh, just one question. We have one question coming from Latvia. Will this presentation file be available later? Yeah, we can provide it to you if you want to have it, surely. Okay. So now we will talk about the uh, indoor climate factors. These factors um, can be categorized in three groups, beginning with thermal factors, which relate to temperature, humidity, and air movement. On the other side, there are air quality factors, which are determined by the CO2 concentration and other pollutants in the air, like dust or even the more harmful non-visible fine dusts as well as volatile organic compounds. Last but not least, talking about the noise level and vibrations. Let me start with thermal factors. Here we need to understand the heat sensitivity of humans. It's not only the air temperature itself that gives us a comfortable feeling, it's also the radiant temperature we feel on our skin. And the temperature we feel, the perceived temperature, is approximately the arithmetic mean of the air temperature and the radiant temperature. There are many studies about the ideal room temperature. There are different sources, different uh, calculation methods. So there are a lot of different values. But in general, the ideal temperature lies somewhere between 20 and 23 degrees in winter, when the outside temperature is below 12 degrees, and in summer, somewhere between 22 and 26 degrees when it's hot outside. But you see there's a wide range, and this is also dependent on every single person, because everyone as sensitivity. 
And in between the seasons, the um, ideal temperature lies somewhere in between these values. Um, it's also depending on condition outside. For example, of the last five days, has it been cold? Um, the room temperature can be a little bit lower because we had cold temperatures. And if it has been cold, uh, warm or hot outside, the room temperature can be slightly higher. Following studies, the ideal temperature for a sleeping room lies between 16 and 19 degrees, but there are no specific studies for other rooms. Um, in Germany, uh, when we are doing a heat demand calculation, we calculate with 20 degrees for rooms like um, sleep uh, room, I mean, uh, living room or in the kitchen. There we are calculating with 20 degrees. And for a bathroom, we are even calculating with 24 degrees because we want to have it a little bit warmer in the bathroom. There are also other terms affecting the sensitivity of humans. For example, the air movement impact, which you can see on the, in the chart on the right-hand side. So um, if there is a lot of air movement, there's a high air velocity, we tend to feel cold. And the other way around, when there is no air movement, we tend to feel warm. And the green area shows the comfortable zone. And also, um, we, or we like to have a vertical temperature distribution, have it warm in the area of our feet and a little bit cooler in the area of our head. And this um, uh, temperature difference should not exceed three Kelvin. When we are talking about thermal comfort, we always need huge areas for cooling and heating because these heating systems provide a uniform thermal distribution. And these systems also have a high ratio of radiant power compared to convection power. And these characteristics are also seen as comfortable and they provide us a pleasant feeling. Now I want to show you a short video coming from our radiant heating and cooling systems. The speaker explains which factors lead to overheating, what impact does overheating have on the occupants and how this problem can be solved. And please also concentrate on what the speaker is saying about indoor climate factors and their impact. It is becoming increasingly important to plan an active cooling system when building modern commercial premises and public buildings. There are many factors that lead to increases in room temperatures, even when it's cold outside. These include modern construction methods dictated by strict thermal insulation standards, heat emitted from modern electronic equipment, and even simply overcrowding. Whilst the requirements for a comfortable indoor climate, sophisticated glass facades without any shade do not usually offer adequate thermal protection. So when outside temperatures are hitting record levels, the room temperatures can quickly climb to uncomfortable or even hazardous levels. Studies have shown that productivity and concentration fall rapidly as the room temperature increases. Excessively warm rooms cause people to lose motivation, resulting in a greater risk of errors or accidents. With Zender cooling ceilings, you can create a comfortable indoor climate. 
The cooling ceilings are based on the radiance principle, which involves positioning radiant panels on the ceiling with cold water flowing through them to absorb the heat radiation from people, electronic devices, objects and surfaces. The surface temperatures drop and the space becomes pleasantly cool, all without noise or drafts. The sound absorbing effect of the cooling ceiling increases comfort levels further to create a healthy indoor climate. A Zinder cooling ceilings can be combined with renewable energy sources. You no longer have to use cooling appliances that waste lots of energy. Groundwater at a temperature of around 12 degrees centigrade is an ideal coolant. Thanks to their high cooling power and minimal energy consumption, Zinda cooling ceilings are not only easy on the environment, but also on your bank account. And the cost-saving advantages of the system don't stop there. It's also maintenance-free. Zinda cooling ceilings, the alternative to traditional cooling systems. With Zinda, making your commercial premises energy efficient, cost-effective and comfortable is no longer a challenge. Zinda will take care of your entire project from beginning to end. Contact your Zinda contact partner. So a very good explanation, in my opinion. I hope you got a point out of it. When we talk about thermal comfort, we also need to consider humidity. As you know, water is the basis, basis of our life so to speak, for molds and bacteria as well. Where does the humidity come from? There are different sources, like people. When we are briefing, we brief out um, humidity. And if we are cleaning, cooking, or washing in the flat, we, we produce humidity, as well as plants produce humidity um, inside the building. Every day, a single person produces 2.5 liters of water. In our regions, we have cold winters where we need to heat up the buildings. So the relative humidity drops and the air gets dry. And this is not very comfortable. And we complain about sniff, cough, or mucosa irritations. During summer, when we are cooling, um, the relative humidity rises, and there could occur some problem with some problems with condensation, and the air is, is getting humid and sticky, and this is also not very comfortable. You all know this: when it's humid, we begin to sweat. The comfort zone for an appropriate humidity lies between 40 and 60% of relative humidity. So what we have seen here, humidity needs to be considered in terms of thermal factors and also in terms of um, structural damages. What could happen if the humidity is too high? This can lead to structural damages um, like molds and bacteria, as you can see on the picture. And these molds uh, are also a risk to our health and they can cause diseases of human beings. Yeah. And studies showed that a relative humidity at a level of 80% over a few days um, causes molds. Now let's put all these factors together into one chart. On the horizontal axis, you can see the air temperature, and on the vertical axis, the relative humidity in percent. And here you can see the green area, which is the comfort zone. And there you can see how each factor relates to each other. So if the temperatures are low, it is still seen as comfortable if the humidity is a little bit higher, whereas um, when it's warmer, the relative humidity should be less. 
And then we have the less green area around it where it's still comfortable. Here we are in a range from 18 to 26 degrees and the relative humidity from um, 30 to 70 or 80 percent. And if we are out of that region, it's seen as uncomfortably humid, uncomfortably warm or uncomfortably cold and so on. So you see thermal comfort is dependent not only on the temperature, but also on humidity and air movement. Now I want to check if you are still concentrating on the presentation. So I prepared a little poll to see if you understood what I was telling you. So Klaus, please start the poll. And do not hesitate to take a choice. We do not see your names. We just see the total results. So feel free. We will give you one more minute to take a choice. So, Adrian, we have now 50% of our audience, 47% is saying we are comfortable, 38% still comfortable, and 6% uncomfortably humid, and 6% uncomfortably warm. Okay, so we have a wide range of answers. I know this question was a little bit tricky. Um, if we look at the chart, when you close the Paul, I think you can see the chart again. And then we are at 24 degrees and 50%, not in the zone of very comfortable, but it's still seen as comfortable. So it was answer B. Okay, let's move on. Indoor climate is not only dependent on um, thermal factors, but also on indoor air quality itself. And the most known factor here is the CO2 concentration. So let's start with the CO2 concentration. Here I got a chart. And um, on the horizontal line, you have the hours, and on the vertical axis, the CO2 concentration in ppm in parts per million so let's take a look at the black line at the bottom this line shows the outdoor air co2 concentration which lies logically at 400 parts per million because this is a um, average measured value in germany now let's take a look at the red line this line shows the CO2 concentration when we when people are in a room and all windows are closed. You can see it, the CO2 concentration rises. And even after one hour, we exceed the green area and it's still rising because we are not um, ventilating. And if we get out of the green area, um we begin to feel tired we maybe get headache so the concentration decreases and now let's take a look at the blue line which shows the co2 concentration with a mechanical ventilation system you can see the co2 level can be kept down or can be even controlled by a co2 sensor you do not actually need a CO2 sensor, but um, there you can control the CO2 level in detail. Um, but you can also calculate 
or you can design a ventilation concept um, that keeps the level of the CO2 concentration in the green area. The goal here is not to exceed 1,000 parts per million. To reach this by window ventilation, we would need to open the windows every hour or every second hour. And on the other side, the ventilation system does this automatically. And we do not have uh, instinct for the CO2 concentration. That's why um, in Germany, the limited values are rarely met because, as I said, we do not have an instinct. So we react, if at all, too late when the air is already sticky or humid. And then it looks like on the picture you can see on the right side. So let's talk about another pollutant. Um, you all know the moment when there is dust on the floor and you need um, to vacuum once again. This coarse dust can be very annoying, especially when you're suffering from allergies. But the more harmful dust is the non visible fine dust, which is defined as particles in the air which have maximum 10 micrograms. And why does this fine dust matter? Um, of course, you can imagine we are breathing in these particles every day and they get into our body, they lay down on our lungs and they can cause lung diseases as well as heart diseases. In general, um, fine dust reduces our life expectancy. And where do these particles come from? There are different sources. They can come from agricultural processes, um, from pollen, molds, as we have seen before, from the traffic, from combustion, from smoking, and in the office, for example, from printers, which emit a lot of fine dust, and also from abrasion, not only from the car tires, but also from our shoes when we are walking through the flat. And maybe you have some governmental restriction in your countries. We have it, for example, for densely populated cities like in Stuttgart, as you can see on the picture. And when the limits in Stuttgart are exceeded, there is an alarm and only authorized um, cars are allowed to drive into the city. And these limited values are 40 microgram per cubic meter at PM10. PM stands for particulate matter, um, which means these particles are not bigger than 10 micrograms, as well as PM2, which means not bigger than 2.5 micrograms. In the office, we have a limited value of 60 micrograms per cubic meter at PM10, and in production facilities, even 950 at PM10. But we do not have limits for um, private indoors. So there was an investigation of 100 households in Germany, and the results were that third flat had more than 50 micrograms per cubic meter, um, which is more than uh, in highly frequented streets in, in, in huge cities. And even on every flat, we had more than 400 micrograms per cubic meter. So you can see these values are quite high. And even the World Health Organization, WHO, is warning of too high concentrations of fine dust in the air because this is a serious risk to our health. 
Another pollutant in the air, which we cannot see, are volatile comp um, organic compounds, which are called YOCs. And these YOCs are carbon-based substances um, that can be vaporized by small changes in temperature or pressure. And where do they come from? Um, YOCs appear in large numbers in new buildings. Floors, ceiling material, varnish, and adhesives exhale this YOCs. And here applies the older the building, um, the less YOCs are emitted. But they can also come from other sources like bleeding supplies, disinfectant and cleaning agent as well as care products like deodorants and perfume. And these substances can cause short-term effects on our health, like a dry throat or headache or fatigue, which leads to a, a low productivity, so our performance is decreasing. The long-term effects are more harmful and they cannot be removed. And this could be, for example, deep or sensory disorders. Now let's take a look what happens if we just open our windows. So what about the temperature? Of course, you do not have heat recovery. You just get in the air how it is. Same applies for humidity. There is no humidity recovery. And also in winter, when you open the windows, you get pores, which is very uncomfortable. And talking about indoor air quality, you um, take in dust from outside and also fine dust. As you can see here on the picture, you have a lot of traffic. So there's no protection and also for other pollutants like the YOCs. And using a mechanical ventilation system, you have the opportunity to put in a filter, which can filter all these particles. And what we haven't talked about yet, the noise factors. So yeah, you can see if it's summer, it's warm outside and you want to sleep, and you open the window and you are um, living directly at the street, this can be very annoying. And additionally, as you can see on the picture, we do not have, have protection. So now you have seen why indoor climate is important and what are the factors determining a comfortable and healthy indoor climate. And now on the following slides, I want to show you our products and systems that provide a healthy and comfortable indoor climate. Cinda is a system solution provider with four product lines. We have decorative radiators, comfortable indoor ventilation systems, heating and cooling systems, and clean air solutions. In further webinars, we will take a look on these products in detail. So the Cinta decorative radiators, uh, I think the most known product from our brand is the Cinta Charleston, which has a history over 90 years and is actually produced here in La in Germany. And, and these radiators um, are very flexible, so you can find for every situation on site a solution. Yeah. And we also have a wide range of um, design radiators and also for bath radiators, as you can also see here behind me. We also have seen the comfortable ventilation systems in our product portfolio. And these systems um, provide a safe removal of pollutants as others, pollen, 
um, dust and fight dust as well as IOCs. We also avoid humidity problems and protect our building structure. These systems also come with energy savings due to the recovery of heat or due to the recovery of humidity with an enthalpy exchanger. And we do not have quartz compared to window ventilation. And we offer radiant heating and cooling systems. Um, these systems work on the natural principle that is identical to the way the sun produces warmth. So, you know, direct sunlight on cold winter days makes us feel warm and is perceived as comfortable despite the cold ambient air. And the cooling effect of these panels is working on the same principle. And the occupants and objects of a building always interact with these panels and give off their heat to the ceiling panels via radiation. And we have clean air solutions. Um, these products filter the air and provide um, a safe and healthy working environment for the employees, for industries like logistics and the food and drinking sector. As I already mentioned, we will show and discuss different products and systems in detail on further webinars. We will inform you about uh, upcoming events via email, or you can also check our social media or our website. I hope you enjoyed the first webinar. Thank you for taking part. It was a pleasure to host you here today. And now we have some time left to answer questions. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. And we will answer to your questions. So we have one question coming out from Narendra. Do you have a sales rep in India? Oh, no, I don't think so. Maybe Helena, you can help here. Is Helena still there? Not okay. I will gather um, this information and come back to you via email after the webinar. Any other questions? Mark is asking, is it possible to get the copy of the, this presentation, please? Yeah, I think we can send this presentation to you. So we have your email addresses and we can send it to you if you want to have it. So we have one question I'm joining from Thailand. How can I buy a ventilation unit? Um, yeah, Klaus, I think you are the right contact person here. Yes, uh, so, yeah, we have we have an, an company in Thailand who is distributing our ventilation systems and we can uh, provide the contact details uh, to you.
Yeah, sorry, there was no sound. I think we can close the session now if there are no further questions. Um, yeah, if you still have some questions, you can always contact us via email or give us a call and we will respond to your questions. Thank you for taking part and have a nice day. Goodbye.